folks who are taking a seat. We've got lots of room in the front, so everybody, let's get on the front side of our good friends in the media. Let's welcome those folks who came to cover. Thank you. program, uh, but as Mayor of Columbus, Georgia, I want to thank you all for coming to welcome our next Lieutenant Governor, Ms. Sarah Riggs Amico. <laughs> Sarah and her team have been traveling all over South Georgia this week. You've probably seen it on Facebook, on Twitter, all over social media. It's amazing the turnout they've gotten, and so I'm so proud to see you folks here. I know we're going to have a few more folks as 5 o'clock hour comes around and people are able to get off work and actually join us. That's why we have the DJ. That's why we have Be Amazing Wings out there so people can get a good nutritional dinner uh, here while they're dancing it off. Uh, but we're going to be here a while. Um, I'm going to uh, get started with the program, but let me just say uh, a few things about some folks that turned out. We had uh, Miss Mary Jane Gaylers just joined us. Our community leader extraordinaire on the program today. Of course, you're going to hear from Carolyn Kugley, representative. Representative Debbie Butler. We want to thank our folks from the Sheriff's Office for helping us. Thank you all for coming out. That's our Sheriff Thomas Hopkins. with us in spirit. She may be here a little bit later this afternoon. But let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling. And so I want to turn it over to Patricia Lassiter. Thank you, Patricia, for helping to pull this together. Patricia. Thank you and welcome to our new campaign headquarters. This is the headquarters for the Democratic Party of Georgia's coordinated campaign to elect um, our Governor Stacey Abrams, our fantastic Lieutenant Governor Sarah Briggs and Miko. John Barrow and a host of other fantastic Democrats here. Uh, we have so many wonderful people here. Of course, we have um, the lovely Ms. Mary Jane Gaylor. We have the lovely Ms. Juanita Booker, some of the godmothers of why we're here right now. And uh, I want you to remember this address, 1828 Midtown Drive, because we're going to be here. And this Saturday marks 100 days until the election. Wow. That's wow. Time at all. So you can make sure that because we're going to be working together, we're going to be knocking on doors, we're going to be calling, we're going to be texting, we're going to be going into these rural counties that, that um, Sarah Riggs Amico and Stacey Abrams and all these um, great candidates that are so diverse are making sure that we're going into rural counties and counting that rural vote that has been sort of neglected for a while. We're neglecting you no longer. We are everywhere. Sarah's been everywhere this weekend. She's going to continue. We are so grateful that she's here. I want to make sure that um, if you're hungry, go out there to um, find um, Brandon with Be Amazing Wings. And please, let's thank um, DJ New Jack over here, who's playing all the really great tunes. So if, you, if you haven't signed in, please sign in. Because you volunteers are going to be what wins this for us. We may want to make sure that um, you get in touch and get to know this gentleman right here, Mr. Adam Drucker. He is the regional for Columbus, Georgia. And I also want to let you know that we are still hiring. Um, this particular coordinated campaign is committed to hiring in community for community. So if you feel like you would like to be a part of this campaign, come to Adam, come to me, come to um, where is she? Candidate Valerie Haskins, right yes. here. Yes. Candidate Haskins is running for um, state district, um, state state senate district 29, formerly or sort of held by Josh McKinnon. No more. No more. No more. It's going to be Valerie. So I'll get to know her and work on her campaign as well because we must all work together. We can't just have Sarah Riggs Amigos Lieutenant Governor. We can't just have Stacey Abrams as governor. We must all come in together because we must support each other so that we can do the business of supporting Georgians. I am so grateful to see you all here. Mm -hmm. And I hope to see you pretty much every day until, um, <laughs> or, or think about every day. Um, one quick thing before I sit down, tomorrow is a runoff election. We cannot afford to ever not vote again. If you have not voted early, you have a chance to go to your polling place tomorrow. Um, I would not. Uh, I don't like to tell people what to do, but I think that you should vote for Mike Edmondson for um, school board. I think you should vote for Amy Bryan for um, 
uh, um, um, at large city council, city council at large, and um, and take your pick of the two wonderful candidates that we have for to run for um, state superintendent. But vote you must. There is never a time to miss voting again. So bring a person with you. Always think about voting. We can win this. We have the votes to win this. It is time to win this. And so one. Before I go, Adam just showed just showed me one other thing. We have a person that is running for um, that is running for governor, whatever, in the primary tomorrow, who is our Secretary of State, who is devoted to suppressing our vote. Mm. So we must make sure that we not only cast our votes, we make sure that our votes are counted, and we make sure that our neighbors' votes are counted. So Adam, in the back, we have a voter protection hotline number. Please commit that to memory because we are committed to making sure that. We, that Georgia does not remain the fourth most vulnerable voting, I mean, vulnerable place to get their vote not counted. We can't do that. We cannot do that. So I'm going to stop rambling because you can come hear me rambling every single day until the election. Uh, my new job is actually I'm the, I'm the deputy field director for the Democratic Party of Georgia. And that, what that means, what that means is that I am committed to working in Columbus in Augusta, in Albany, in Savannah, every place that is not Atlanta, to make sure that we turn out our votes. We rock down here, people. Let's not, let's, let's not make this an Atlanta campaign. So let's rock together. You know, say hello to your neighbors, because we're going to be partners while we finish this. The other person that I, of course, wanted to um, 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 mention is the person that made this all possible, our Muskogee County Democratic Committee Chair, Ms. Sandra Ellison. All right. Woo! Thank goodness for all of you all. I'm going to stop rambling. What a wonderful time to be a Democrat. I'm going to pass this over to our lovely minority whip, um, Ms. Carolyn Newley. Before I say that, one thing I need to, um, um, I need to, I need to thank her for something. It is, before we got into this building, Carolyn Hughley said, I have an extra built, an extra place right next to my office. Come in here every single day. Here's the alarm code and here's the key. We have been there for months. Wow. And we have been working out of there every single day. She has been just our angel. So I would like to um, introduce our minority whip, Ms. Carolyn Hayden. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. we need a beat in here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> rock this boat in here. We've got to have a little something, something. Yeah. What you got? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they got it. <laughs> well, they play that at Doug Jones's birth, uh, victory party. <laughs> I mean, they, it's true they did that, and they played up Tom Funk. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs>
they better get ready because she's going to take it right to them. Mm. And while they're over there practicing the politics of hate mm. and trying to see who's most like Trump, oh. she's going to be talking about our future. She's going to be talking about our children. She's going to be talking about health care for all Georgians. And that's what's important to our citizens. And that's why we have the winning message. We have the winning team this year. I'm so delighted to be with you. I'm Carolyn Hughley. It's my honor to be the minority whip. And because it's hot in here, I'm going to pass it off. <laughs> 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 yes. She hated it up. Pass it off. I mean, give me your breath. <laughs> uh, I am Debbie Buckner. I'm running for Senate House District 1. 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 I'm running for Senate House and I am so pleased and delighted to be here with all of you, and especially with our candidates. And, and uh, Valerie, we're pulling for you and yeah. going to work hard for you. We need Valerie in the Senate to work with Sarah sitting up on the, right. the podium as the Lieutenant Governor. Right. Um, I, I, we've talked a lot about the need for all of us to get out, but I want you to know why you need to get out and vote for Sarah. I have read about her and kind of heard about her a little before um, you really became so well known. Mm. And I agree with the, what the whip said about you have a positive message. You have gone in places and worked in a predominantly male industry of trucking, mm. which is not just a male industry, it's a he man kind of male <laughs> industry, and has made a success of it. And she did it in a way that took care of the employees, provided health care for them, hired vets, mm. and took care of them, and also took care of the communities where they worked with Volunteer Day, and did something that those of us in the House of Representatives has talked about for years, and that is parental leave for people to get off work to go see the good things their kids are doing in schools. Mm. Yeah. That's running for this job that's worked mm. in a business like that. <laughs> There's not another person running for lieutenant governor that has cared about the things that are so important to Georgia's working families mm. and demonstrated that it can not only be done and take care of those working families, but it can be done and be successful for the business. Mm. That's the key message. When you take care of your employees, they deliver and take care of the bottom line of your business. And we need that kind of attitude and that kind of information and that kind of, of evidence-based de delivery on, on a promise to Georgia families all across the state, not just the ones where she works, but in every business and all across the state. I am just tickled to death that Sarah's running I am hopeful that everybody in the whole state will vote for her. Mm. I have seen the kind of work that the other two candidates on the other side have done, as you can call it work. <laughs> and I have seen the evidence of some really bad decisions made by at least one of them that hurt working families, the way they didn't handle licensing for nurses. We had a whole month in the state of Georgia where Georgia nurses didn't have their medical license because the Secretary of State's office didn't handle them correctly. Mm. So we who got a candidate here that is knowledgeable about working families' needs, has worked and worked hard, and has been successful, and that's what we need in Georgia. We need new leadership that comes to the table with experience, that is willing to work hard and that knows how to make things successful. And I, I am so tickled to support you and I will do whatever I can and I hope everybody in here will vote and bring the five or ten along with them to vote so we can get you in because I would look forward to having the bill get out of the Senate. <laughs> vote for Sarah, Riggs, and Beacon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We got a local celebrity. Yeah. I can't, I'll give it back to our mayor. <laughs>
Thank you, Debbie. And I just want to tell you all again, we got our friends in the media here, so if you're standing behind the media, you might as well not even come because we, they're going to be playing this tonight and they're going to say how many people showed up for this lieutenant governor candidate in Muskogee County. And somebody's going to be counting heads. Mm -hmm. I do it when the opposition comes to town. I count how many people showed up for the other person. I'd love all of y'all to be counted, so you come on up. Particularly for when the candidate's standing here, please everybody get on this side of the camera. So thank you so much. I want to tell you something. There is a different wind blowing in Georgia. One we haven't felt for some time. It's no mistake that three out of four of the statewide constitutional officers on the Republican side of the ticket are in a runoff. Mm. They, they can't make up their mind. They're fighting. Uh, you know, it's, it's horrible over there. The divisiveness that they have bred so long as a voter turnout tactic is now eating them alive. Mm. And on the other hand, the Democrats have come together and produced the greatest slate of candidates we've ever seen. Mm. Uh, led by, <laughs> led by, of course, Stacey Abrams, who's going to be our next governor. We've got Ooh. Sarah Amico, who's going to be our lieutenant governor. We have John Barrow, who's going to be our secretary. State. And Charlie Bailey is going to be the next Attorney General for the state of Georgia. These folks are so impressive. And the first time I ever met Sarah, I was blown away. She is a Harvard Business uh, School graduate. I has a master's in business administration from Harvard University. And I don't just tell you that to impress you because of the big name. Let's think about that for a minute. Do you know how few people, the best of the best, the best of the best, that's our lieutenant governor candidate for the Democratic ticket. Mm -hmm. Those are the quality <coughs> candidates that we are fielding this time around. And then I go to meet her, and she's even more impressive than her bio, mm -hmm. more impressive than her resume. She's dynamic, she speaks from the heart. As Debbie said, here's a woman who built a business, embraced unions, and embraced collective bargaining because she knows that when employees come together with one voice, that helps her business. Mm -hmm. She believes in investing in her employees, and she knows it, pr it provides a return. That's why she has 3,500 employees and a very profitable business. Mm -hmm. And she's doing it the right way that builds up the middle class and builds up families. And why, how does that affect us, and how, well, how is that going to affect her job as lieutenant governor? She's going to be the one who decides what bills make it to the floor. Mm -hmm. And so no more are we going to have this smoke and mirrors of religious liberty. Sounds like a great name. But what's it really for? Just for us to hate, hate on hate. each other, right? Sure Just a way to hate on each other in the name of the Lord, which I gotta say, there's a whole other conversation that's gonna take place about that someday. That's not gonna be our problem to solve, all right? But we're not gonna be having any more of that under the Gold Dome, because with Sarah Riggs Amigo, Amigo they're gonna be, Amico, they're going to be bringing bills such as Medicaid expansion. And uh -huh. things that really, really, woman who knows firsthand how immigration builds this nation, how immigration adds value to our communities. And she'll tell you a little bit about that, how immigration builds families and builds a better Georgia. Uh, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, our next Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Georgia, Sarah Bridge. <laughs>
standing room only. We see electric energy, and we see an understanding of exactly what's at stake in this election. So I'm so grateful y'all would take the time to be here today on a Monday afternoon. I know you've got a lot of places you could be, but the fact that you're here doing the hard, important work of democracy says everything about who we are as Democrats, yeah. everything. So let me tell you a little bit about who I am. Let me tell you what I think this means for our election and how it's going to shape and reshape the role of Lieutenant Governor. And then I wanna spend just a few minutes talking with y'all about what I believe is really on the ballot this November 6th. So I grew up in a small town in the Ozarks, in rural Southwest Missouri. Uh, my parents were high school sweethearts. Uh, they still are, very much so. Um, they met on Valentine's Day in 1969 and they have three girls, so I have two younger sisters. I grew up in the kind of community that you feel like was on a sitcom. It was, you know, uh, every kid rode their bikes, kids were safe, we went to the public schools, your friends lived down the street. I didn't have to worry about cowering in a corner or a closet in my school in an active shooter drill. Mm. I didn't have to worry about whether or not going down the street, no matter what I looked like or how I prayed or who my parents were or who their partner was, mm. I didn't have to worry whether or not that put my health or my safety at risk. Mm -hmm. We know here in Georgia justice should be blind, that it could be blind and it isn't. Mm. And when I was growing up, we were taught better. Mm -hmm. We were taught better because we understood the stakes. You see, that public education that I went to took me all the way to Harvard Yard. Those teachers didn't have all the resources they needed, but they poured their heart and soul into my hopes and dreams for a future. That's how you get a girl from the Ozarks to Harvard. Mm -hmm. That is what we do. When we make 21st century investments in education, we can have a 21st century workforce that leads the 21st century economy yeah. in this state. Yeah. And let me tell you what I've seen as we've toured over 15 counties in Southwest Georgia over the last three days. What I've seen at the Stuart Webster Hospital in Stuart County was a 25 bed hospital, one of six rural hospitals that have closed since 2013. Since our stage leadership made a brazen political choice not to expand Medicaid. This was a 25 bed hospital that served that community. Think of the babies born there. Mm. Think of the children who were treated there with their nervous parents. Think of the folks who said their last goodbyes to their loved one in that hospital. And as we were leaving what now looks like an overgrown garden, it mm. is completely and utterly abandoned and the nearest hospital is 60 miles away. 60 miles. And we left and 10 minutes later, we saw a terrible car accident on the road. True story, just earlier today, the car was turned over and in the ditch on the side of the road. Whoever was in that car, somebody's child, maybe somebody's parent, they no longer got to go 10 minutes down the road to the nearest hospital, they had to go 60 miles. Mm. That's what's at stake. When we talk about Medicaid expansion, it's not just that we have 63 counties in Georgia without a pediatrician. Mm. We have 79 counties without an OBGYN, 66 mm. counties without a surgeon. Mm. We have six counties with no doctor whatsoever. It's not just the nine rural hospitals we've lost and six of them in the last five years. It is real people, real hopes and dreams, and for the people who are in those kinds of accidents, it's a matter of life and death, not dollars and cents. So, and as your next Lieutenant Governor, I will make it my mission to make sure the people in Webster County and in every other county in this state have access to the health care that they need, particularly in the rural communities just like the one where I grew up. <laughs> but in order to get all of these things, in order to make those robust, bold, strategic investments in our people that I've learned in the business world yield the best results and the highest returns. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to have new leadership. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because for more than a decade, we've had basically one party running the state with majorities in both houses of our state legislature. They've had every constitutionally elected office. And you know what? In that time, we've reached those statistics. And we've not only reached those, we've underfunded our public schools by more than $9 billion. $9 billion into the great equalizer of opportunity, into the schools my kids go to. Think about it. It shouldn't matter what you look like or how much money your folks had or how or if you pray. It shouldn't matter where you start out. That shouldn't determine where you end up. And it's our public schools that get us there. It is educators who are underpaid, overwhelmed, and undervalued, and we're going to fix it. 
We're going to fix it starting this November 6th. When we elect them, we And inevitably, I see Republicans. And, and you know, look, some of these guys got into public service for all the right reasons. And we may disagree on policies, but some of them are probably very well intentioned. But the fact remains, they go out and they campaign about how they're going to fix rural health care or how they're going to fund our schools. They go out and they campaign about how they're going to bring rural broadband to the communities we've seen up in the Northeast, where folks are driving their teenage kids to the McDonald's parking lot to get Wi-Fi so they can do their homework. Mm. They campaign on it, and the first thing that goes through my mind is, what the heck have you been doing for 12 years? Mm, Y'all right. know you were in the majority. You had all the power in the world to change it. You just chose not to. Mm. They didn't think it was important enough because they were counting on all of us. They were counting on us not to show up. And if you think about what's happened since January of 2017, we have marched for women. 60,000 people marched side by side with my husband and I in Atlanta for women's rights to show that my two daughters have equal worth and equal opportunity to my nephews. Yes. We, we marched for science because yeah. those of us who lead organizations that want to be at the front end of technology and want to lead the future know that facts and science and data matter and they form the foundation of good public policy. <laughs> we march for our lives because we know there's nothing wrong with somebody who wants to hunt or fish or mm. shoot just for fun. But that criminal recidivist offenders Mm. that the mentally ill, the domestic abusers, these folks should not have a firearm under any condition. Amen. And we march to keep families together because that's who we are as Americans. And I don't think it matters whether you're Republican or Democrat. No. I don't think it matters one bit. This is not a country whose soldiers have fought and died and bled in countries far afield so that we could rip screaming infants from their mother. We have marched again and again, and the biggest march of your life is going to come up on November 6th. Yeah. And we've got to get you there, guys. I get it. We were taught not to talk religion and politics. I am an evangelical Christian and a Democrat. I've never abided by those rules. <laughs> I'm not going to start now. <laughs> we got to talk politics. we got to go to those ballot boxes like the future depends on it, because in so many ways it does. It does. It is. You got, look at these people here. Look at the candidates we get to vote for in this slate. We have leader Stacey Abrams, who is going to make a spectacular history-making governor and do the work. That's the thing that's missing right now under the Gold Dome. You got a bunch of people who want to do the politics, but not the work. Because mm. politics is a lot easier than problem solving. Right. It is. You've got that all the way down to Valerie Haskins. You get to vote for people like Representative Carolyn Hughley, Representative Debbie Buckner. You've got Don Randolph, you've got Lindy Miller for Public Service Commission, yeah. and John Barrow. You will have a Secretary of State who thinks it's his job to protect your right to the vote. That's right. How is that for revelation? <laughs> but as good as all of those names are, and as amazing as all of those candidates are, I want to tell you that's not what's really on your ballot. Mm. What's on your ballot is our democracy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What's on your ballot are our shared values who we are as Georgians and as Americans, what's on your ballot is the kind of world we want to leave our kids. So let me tell you what I believe about that world and what I think we believe as Democrats and how to talk politics with your neighbors, with your colleagues, with your friends, your family. I don't care who they voted for in the past. Go out and tell them why this matters. Tell them that we believe. Say, I believe in 2018 a sick child should be able to go to the doctor. Yeah. Full stop. <laughs> tell them that. Tell them that I believe a quality public education is the underpinning for our democracy and our economy, and it's simply not optional. Yes. Amen. Tell them I believe that justice should be blind and it isn't, and that we can do better, and that as long as our democracy isn't equally open to people, no matter what they look like or how much money they have or who they love or how or if they pray, it is not complete. It is a work in progress and one we need to furiously defend with everything we have. Tell them that you believe that we can do better. And you can tell them you heard that because a woman named Sarah Riggs Amico mm. came and told you how she did it. How in 2008 we bought a struggling car haul company 
120 employees, many of them Teamsters, and nobody thought we'd survive. In fact, everybody thought we'd go bankrupt, and sure enough, we almost did a few times. <laughs> everybody thought these weren't solvable problems. I've heard that my whole life. It doesn't even have an effect on me anymore. There's no such thing as an unsolvable problem, only a leader who's not capable or willing to solve it. So tell them that in that last 10 years since 2008, that 120 person company has gone to over 3,500. And that despite the Great Recession, despite the financial collapse, despite the bankruptcies of two of our largest customers, we invested in our people. We gave them paid leave for men and women, mm, birth yes. parents, adoptive parents, yes. foster parents, gay or straight, I don't care. If you have a new child, we're gonna invest in your family because you've invested in ours. We have given people opportunities to serve their community. We have given people on-site daycare to try to solve the conundrum that women around this country face about how to go back to work with small children. Yes. We have been walking the talk while these guys have been sitting under the gold dome on the Republican side talking politics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and instead of problem solving, they've been politicking. They've been too busy tri stripping away tax credits for Delta Airlines, our state's largest employer. Mm. Too busy to actually figure out how to get rural health care. Tell people you believe rural communities deserve access to affordable, high-quality health care. Yes. And that they matter and that they're a vital part of the state. And tell them that you believe on November 6th, we're not only going to change the fate of Georgia, we are literally going to rewrite the political narrative of this country. Hey. We mm. are absolutely, I cheer for that. <laughs> Imagine, last but not least, imagine what that looks like. Imagine the newscast you're watching on November 6th, when nobody sees it coming, but we know, because we've looked at the map, because we've seen these kind of rooms, we've felt this energy, we know what's coming. Imagine those commentators saying, oh my goodness, Georgia is blue. It is a blue state. breaking their way because there's two women who are mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you need your help, y'all. Last but not least, grab a sign. Grab a sign. Grab a flyer. Sign up back here with these lovely people in Sarah Riggs Amico shirts. Get on our email list. Come to our events. Join the coordinated campaign. Knock on a door or two. You know, I took my kids out to do that this weekend. It is rewarding because you feel like you're no longer a passenger but you're in the driver's seat of your democracy. Yeah. That's what you can do between now and November 6th. Throw a few bucks to your favorite candidates. I know Valerie's not gonna tell you no. <laughs> yes. But go out there and tell people why it matters. And if you do that, we have the opportunity to create the kind of world we all wanna leave to our kids and to generations yet unborn here in Georgia. So I'm so grateful for everyone. I'm grateful to Mayor Tomlinson. Thank you so much for a gracious introduction to Representative Debbie Buckner to Minority Whip Carolyn Hughley, we have to Patricia, Laura Register, all of the folks who have been working their tails off to have this opportunity for you to hear about our vision and what we believe. It's because of them we're gonna win this election. The candidates are great, but it's y'all. It's the voters and the volunteers who are gonna turn Georgia blue. So thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Stay around. We're going to have some good music. Chris, it's all yours. Thank you.